lied to my patient. What about adopting his guinea pig? Yes. You're not really going to do that, are you? No, I'm not. But it works, right? He feels better. I can't lie to my patients, and that means that you can't lie to him with me. The most important part of my care is trust. Dr. Murphy, we give patients placebos, sugar pills. They heal, they feel better. That is good medicine, too. Okay, this man, Walter, everything that he said about that guinea pig is true about him. He was abandoned by his mother. He was malnourished, incommunicative. His adoptive parents gave him one-tenth of the love and encouragement that he needed to be a healthy man with healthy attachments to people. Guilt trip received. Okay, now I'm gonna have to give that guinea pig back to him, and everything that we've worked on is gonna backslide. He may not ever part with it again. You wanna waste time backsliding? That is a choice. Right now, your patient is on his way to being healed. That is your choice. Walter, you know how we've been discussing your self-esteem and how it's easier for you to stay home with Valenween and take care of her than to go out and how socially your experience is feeling withdrawn? Yeah, and I'm gonna work on that. Now that Valenween has a home... Well, actually, Walter, about that, um... I've got a good feeling about that doctor. She's a heart doctor. And she is so beautiful. Walter, wait. Uh... I gotta say, I love that guinea pig so much, but I can't believe how nice it feels to give it to the doctor who fixed my heart. Well... Walter, Dr. Bell and I discussed the real issues that surround her taking a guinea pig, considering her busy schedule, and, um... And we decided that at my house, Val and me would be left alone for too many hours of the day. And the last time that I checked, my neighborhood doesn't have a guinea pig watcher. <laughs> so, Dr. Murphy suggested that I make a home for Val and Ween in my office. That way, I could make sure that she eats every day, and my office has a south-facing window, so she'll get lots of light. Dr. Bell, how can I ever thank you? Wow, Dr. Bell. You can thank me by coming to visit Bell and me. Keep her company. Really? I will. Not every day. Hey, right, Dr. Murphy? We'll talk about what works for you. Wow, that's a great picture. The woman in it looks really happy. It's because she was. Her life was normal. Okay, stop me if you've heard this before. But there is no black and white definition of normal. Normal is subjective. It's a messy, inconsistent, silly, hopeful version of how we feel most at home in our lives. Did you just make that up? No. <laughs> it was story spelling. <laughs> I know, right? So I guess now I have to admit that I'm a reality TV junkie. Me too. Are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I knew I liked you. Look, I know it's hard for you to put yourself out there. But you just have to do it. Because I'm scared to think of what's going to happen to you if you don't. Nothing's going to happen. No, that's the thing about reality. The one minute you're fine, the next you're not. Nothing changes. Nothing stops. We affect nothing. Well, oh, that's a little more uh, Nietzsche than Tori Spelling. <laughs> anyway, we are officially done here, so... Come on, let me walk you out. Anita. What? You want to say goodbye? I thought you left. I almost forgot my head. <laughs> How you hold up? Okay. I have to come back tomorrow. I have an appointment with uh, Dr. Druckerman. Yeah, he's a good shrink. You'll like him. Well, you're not so bad yourself. Maybe that's because I know how you feel. 
A while ago, I watched a friend of mine die. How did he die? Saving a man's life. Very noble. He went out like a rock star. He was like that. The anniversary's coming up. You got any advice? Accept it. If you don't, it'll drive you crazy. Thank you. Some more bad news for me, Doctor? Actually, I'm going to do something for you. For me? Or for me. Either way. Now let's get you out of this. Wow, you are really hooked up here, aren't you? Let's call a nurse. Nurse! Okay, so I know you're probably used to Steinways, but... This is the best I could do. I don't really feel up for a concert. No, I'm gonna play for you. <clears throat> we don't have to do this. You know, my mother made me take lessons when I was a kid. At first I thought it was a curse, then in med school it was kind of a respite from talking to patients. <laughs> okay, so I have to warn you. I'm uh, really, really rusty. was, um, it was pretty bad. But it was also, um, it was also pretty great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm officially withdrawing my complaint. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mimi. Where's Claire? She's getting something to eat. And my husband? I don't know. He hasn't come to visit me yet. Mimi. Well, oh, it's such a mess. I, I met Claire at this party a couple of months ago, and oh, she was wearing these black fingerless gloves and these door knocker earrings. I mean, the moment I saw her, I was in trouble. You ever been in that, Dr. Reed? Yes. So you know. I'm supposed to be a married woman in the eyes of the church. But you can't help who you love. I mean, the heart wants what the heart wants. Okay, so what do I do now? Breathe through your nostrils. Uh, breathe out. What do you mean, breathe? How? I mean, how do I breathe? I no, you not... breathe like a human being breathes. Breathe no, in. No, you're just being malicious. That's all. Breathe in. Be aware of your breathing. And feel the breath on top of your lip there. Feel your body relaxing. Be aware of it. This is excruciatingly boring. Well, then you're boring. You know, that's fine. Just. Let go of your boringness. Southern gatherings takes from the See what life brings. <laughs> <laughs> 